before I turned 19, I graduated high school. And uh, long story short, I was into uh, experimenting with drugs and uh, alcohol and all that. Went through my rebellious stage and was approaching my first year of college and ended up deciding I wanted to experiment with magic mushrooms on my 19th birthday. Growing up in a Catholic home, I'd always believed in God, but never believed in Satan and his angels. That day when I consumed these magic mushrooms, I experienced what I thought was definitely satanic oppression. Um, I knew a lot of the things that I was hearing and a lot of the thoughts that I was experiencing was not God and it wasn't my own. And it was a very evil, very panic-stricken, very fearful experience that I went through. Fast forward to the end of the day um, on my 19th birthday. Um, I basically freaked out and tried driving home, but I never made it home that day. Um, I ended up getting into a very bad accident in which somebody had lost their life. And it was a jogger that was on the road that I was driving on trying to drive home. Um, and one of the things that I remember very distinctly because after I had crashed my car, my memories kind of fade in and out. But one of the things I remember is after being so demonically oppressed and feeling so hopeless as if I was going to descend into hell, I remember right before the ambulance came to pick me up, I remember there being uh, EMTs trying to get me on a stretcher and it almost felt like they were angels in a sense, kind of gathering around me, taking care of me. As a Catholic, I didn't know Christ. I was not born again. And I had never heard the word rapture in my life. I had never read the Bible for, before in my life. I didn't know. I thought as a Catholic, I was still trying to work my way to heaven. But as a good person, I thought I was going to heaven. Well, that's the day that the Lord showed me that I was not a good person. Um, I had taken someone's life as a result of me tripping on these demonic mushrooms. I just wanted to share that with you that God sometimes allows afflictions into our life to draw us to repentance. Many of us have to hit rock bottom in order to bring us to repentance. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that God's goodness leads us to repentance. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I was living in rebellion against God. God had given me warnings to stop smoking pot and doing what I was doing. And I never knew that my sins would be uncovered in the way that it was uncovered with my accident. Now, I had been convicted of homicide. And I spent four and a half years from my 19th birthday, or my 19, being 19, all the way to the age of 24, four and a half years incarcerated. I got saved in prison at the age of 20. I gave my life to Christ after I had started reading the Bible and going to Bible studies and heard what it meant to be saved by grace through faith because I was dealing with this immense guilt and this shame. And as Ray Comfort says, the law of God was weighing upon my heart and the law was shining its light upon my heart showing that, that I deserved hell. And I know that if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would be in hell. I would deserve the wrath of God for all the sins I've ever committed and the things that I had done. But be, but God, as it says, but God in his great mercy plucked me out of the dominion of darkness into his marvelous light. And at the age of 20, I was marvelously saved and I did a complete 180. And as a lot of, I tell a lot of people in my testimony, I spent four years going to free Bible college, free Bible college. I spent every day in my Bible doing correspondence Bible studies, studying theology. I picked up a book in the chapel of the prison I was at called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And my life was forever changed as he implanted this seed of the doctrine of the rapture into my heart. And I became instantly fascinated with it. And I always knew that I was going to be a proclaimer, a preacher of righteousness, um, shining light on the evil of this world. I always knew that God was preparing me during those four years to go out into the world and share the gospel with my family and friends and whoever came into my sphere of influence. 
And so this day marks a very solemn time for me where I remember the day that I committed a horrible crime, a crime against somebody else and a crime against God. But it was the day that the Lord used to set me to a path of getting saved. He began to draw me to himself, convict me of my sin, convince me that I was destined for hell and that, um, but it was interesting that same year that I was, you know, cause I was out for 10 months on bail. I went and seen the passion of the Christ. And I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to me saying, don't you see that Jesus took your sins upon himself? At the time, I didn't fully understand that, but you know, that's just one of the ways that the Lord draws you to himself. A whole nother year later, I find myself incarcerated and in May of 2005, giving my life to Jesus Christ. Um, I would like to say that I've been on fire for the Lord ever since, but I've had my ups and downs. I've remained diligent. I don't believe I've ever truly fallen away. Um, you know, when you come out of the dominion of darkness into the marvelous kingdom of his light, and you're so radically changed by Christ, and you're given a second chance, there's no way that you can turn away from him, you know? And, and if there's any doubt as to whether God's credit is good, you know, in order to obtain things in life, we have to, good, have to have good credit. If we want to buy a home, if we want to get a loan for a car, what do they do? They look at your credit rating. Well, God's credit rating is perfect. I can look at my life being saved for 17 years and God has never forsaken me. I've always paid my bills. He has always supplied our needs. He has always answered my prayers. He has always directed me in the path that I should go. Every single one of his promises are true. And so I wanted to share that testimony with you guys today to encourage some of you out there that might be struggling or in a season of hopelessness and despair. I have been in those seasons. I've had the enemy attack me with suicidal thoughts, especially after my accident when I was facing 90 years on all the charges thinking my life was over as, as a 19 year old who was supposed to be in college, thinking that four and a half years in prison would be an eternity, but God used it for my good. And let me tell you folks, I was more free in prison on the inside than I had been in my entire life. I can look back at prison as being a positive experience in my life where the Lord put me on a timeout. You know, sometimes we gotta put our kids on a timeout, right? You're out of control, go sit on a timeout. Well, that's what God did for me. He put me on a timeout for four and a half years, radically saved me, taught me his word, poured out his spirit on me and said, this is the way you should go, walk in it. I just reflect on this day and it's bittersweet and I pray for the victim's family and I often wonder how their life turned out, but I'm so grateful to know that God is a God of second chances. His credit is good with, with us. He has proven his word to be true. And there's no reason that we should ever doubt his grace. You know, we were bought at a price. We are not our own. The day we said yes to Jesus, we realized that our lives should be a living sacrifice because this is a reasonable act of service. Why is it reasonable? It's reasonable because he plucked us from the, from the depths of hell. Each, each of us deserves the wrath of God, but he took it on the cross. He took all the payment for our sins on the cross and he removed it as far as the east is from the west and he threw it into the sea of forgetfulness so now he only sees us in the perfect righteousness of christ and that's why you and i are fit for heaven not because of the things we've done but because of what his son did you know growing up catholic i thought i had to do enough good word works or if i because i was an altar boy because i went to catholic school and i jumped through all the religious hoops and then I realized that no, all our all our works of righteousness are as filthy rags before God. They're they're horrible. And I came to understand Ephesians 2, 8, 9. My eyes were opened. And for those of you that think that you can lose your salvation, you can't. You did nothing to earn your salvation, and you can do nothing to earn it. Scripture is very clear. No one can pluck the servants of God out of the Father's hand. 1 John 5, 13. I have given them eternal life that they may know that they have it. That assurance, the assurance of knowing we are saved helps us to progress in this walk with Christ. It helps us to continue to walk with Christ. 
if we're constantly doubting our salvation, thinking we're under condemnation, which Romans 8, 1 says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, then we can never freely serve Christ. There's going to be times that we mess up in sin. But 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we have an advocate, a defense lawyer before the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So when the accuser of the brethren comes and accuses you that you sinned and that somehow you're lost because you've sinned, remember and, and tell the devil that there is no condemnation, that I have a defense lawyer, Jesus Christ, and he has imputed his righteousness to my spiritual bank account. And I am as fit for heaven as Jesus Christ is fit for heaven. And that... I have been made holy and blameless, and he who has begun a good work will bring it to completion until the day of Christ. Why? Because it is Christ that is the author and finisher of my faith, and that it is Christ in me to will and to act according to his good purpose. Our part is to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, not out of fear of condemnation, but out of reverence for God's holiness so that we might not offend our Father. And if we get out of line, which many times I've gotten out of line with God, he does what wrote, what Hebrews chapter 12 says. He chastises and rebukes those he loves, just like we chastise and discipline our children because we love them, because we want to point them in the way of righteousness and show them to fear God because God is God. That is why he's worthy of our worship. One of the things the Lord has taught me in this season of watching for the rapture is that we can't put God in a box we can't limit God or make a God of our own understanding. We have to ask God for a glimpse of who he is. Isaiah says his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. So we need to pray, Lord, make, make your thoughts my thoughts and make your ways my ways. Help me better understand who you are, the God who created the universe, the God in which this globe that I sit on, a million of these could fit in the sun, you know? We don't grasp the vastness of who God is. And so we need to have a healthy fear of God and, uh, and understand that he's a God of wrath, but he's a God of mercy and love. And that we don't you know, emphasize one attribute while neglecting the others. I pray this is a blessing to you guys. And uh, I pray that something I said touched somebody. I know I was supposed to make this video and share my testimony. And uh, I just wanna thank all my subscribers out there for watching my videos, for praying for me. So may God bless you with this video and uh, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus.